Hello everybody and welcome to Chop and Brew. I am Chip Walton. This is the one and only... Elsa Walton, aka Tomato Queen. And I am aka... Pepper King. Pepper King. It's a marriage in salsa is what we have got here. We've got tomatoes and peppers. Um, this has been a fan request uh, to do an episode about making salsa at home. We are by no means like the experts, experts at all. or professionals, but it is something that we do a lot, especially during the summer and late summer. You can do it year round with store-bought tomatoes, but it's, a, it's especially awesome during the summertime. The video you're gonna see of the actual <laughs> process we shot about two years ago and just kept not making it happen and not making it happen. But between our CSA and our garden this summer, we've had- We have a bajillion tomatoes. So we've made a lot of salsa. <laughs> so we're gonna run down super quick uh, how we make a red salsa, a green salsa, and then just this last weekend, good thing we didn't do the video before now. We made smoke salsa. We made a really killer smoke salsa, which I think is my favorite that we've ever done. It was really good. And we started making it at home mainly because we moved up here from Texas. From Texas, and, and you know, I grew up eating salsa all the time, so um, I like it really, really spicy. Um, and so when we got here, I was like, well, gotta make my own if I want it really, really, <laughs> really spicy, which is the way that I like it. And this is the way that you can control the flavor Honestly, it's not, you know, you buy them canned and packaged, they can be super salty, super preservatives. Sometimes they put a lot of sugar in salsas if you buy them from the grocery store. Um, so yeah. that's why I like to make my own. So how we do it, man? What, what goes into your basic red salsa, Elsa? Uh, I like to do tomatoes. You can use any kind of variety that you grow if you have a garden. Um, use romas. You can use, I like to use a lot of the yellow varieties um, because they give it a nice color. You can use cherry tomatoes, um, beefsteak tomatoes even. Um, uh, you can put jalapenos in there. Um, usually do a couple serranos, uh, cumin, garlic, lime juice. Uh, Cilantro, if you like cilantro, I know cilantro is a polarizing herb. Some people love it and some people hate it. There's no in between with the cilantro. Black pepper, um, salt, of course. Uh, I like to put a lot of cumin because it has a nice smoky flavor to it, oregano. Um, I think that's about it for a red salsa. Onion, I forgot onion. We should say the basic equipment you need is basically a food processor, a blender, or we've never done it this way, but you could do it in like a, a mocajete mm -hmm. or some kind of like mortar, mortar pestle. Mortar and pestle, you could do it that way. Or I, I guess you could even just do like a super chunky one just by hand, but really the food processor is the, the way to go. The food processor is the way to go. I wouldn't do it in a blender because then you'll get, it'll be too liquidy. Oh, really? You want a, a food processor because you can kind of blend it, but then if it's, you can kind of pulse it so you're not over blending it, but you, if you want it a little chunkier. So the red salsa that you're seeing in the video, um, Elsa basically did, it was mainly Roma tomatoes. You cut off the ends and then you don't have to cut things super small, but you want them in chunks. You want to kind of chunk things up to put them in the food processor. Um, we're going to put the, our suggested kind of recipe, loose form blueprint yeah, I never, on the website. I never go by a recipe. I just kind of throw things into the food processor and then do the old standard taste test. And if I feel like it needs more garlic or more salt or whatever, lime juice, then, you know, you can always add it in. Um, but I'm never going by, you know, a set recipe. I just kind of eyeball it. <laughs> Basically, we look backwards at the video from two years ago, and I'm like, that looks about like a quarter of a teaspoon. That looks about an eighth of a teaspoon. So, um, but once you get all those chunks in, you're gonna pulse it 
a couple times and the the consistency is really up to you do you want it chunky do you want it liquidy we, we don't like our super obliterated but we also like for everything to be well incorporated so you're going to mm -hmm. pulse and once you do that the layer of your, your the level of your tomatoes is obviously going to decrease yeah so if you're making a big batch you can do a second you dose. can put more tomatoes or more garlic or whatever in there um, to make a really big batch of salsa well, how do our red salsas usually turn out they usually Kind of sweet. The garlic is usually pretty strong with our I red like salsas. I like a lot of garlic and uh, like I said, I the like cumin. it spicy. So I'll normally put two or three jalapenos, maybe a couple of serranos in there. We've done it with habanero, chocolate habanero. Black. He grows all kinds of different varieties of peppers. So any peppers that you are growing, if you have a garden, you can use any spicy Peppers or even bell peppers if you don't like it super spicy, bell pepper will give it hmm. kind of a sweetness um, and then you can maybe throw in like, if you don't like it too spicy, like half a jalapeno or something like that. Well let's talk about the green one real quick. So our green salsa, we haven't grown tomatillos in a while, but this one summer that this video is from, we were rich in tomatillos. Yeah, <laughs> they take a long time to grow. Yeah. You have to be very patient, but then once they come into the papers, then you have tons of them. Yeah. So we had... Quite a few. <laughs> and they're small. The same size batch in red salsa was about 10 or 15 tomatoes combined between the two additions for our green salsa. I think we had like 40, 50, 60 because they, you know, they they're get, bigger, just barely bigger than Yeah, the they're kind greens. of like cherry tomato size or a little bit bigger. So. so for the tomatillo, for the green salsa, we had tomatillos, that fresh polarizing cilantro, <laughs> two serrano peppers, black pepper, garlic cloves, parsley. oregano, salt, and our kind of secret ingredient to a green molasses. salsa is molasses. It's, I don't know why, I just think with the tomatillo, yeah. it pairs really well. It adds a nice color, it gets it a little more into kind of like a brown, less mm -hmm. neon green, but it also does something with that richness of mm -hmm. the sweet, um, but yeah. you can go overboard, so yeah, definitely so start low. Start low, and then if you add a little too much, if you have extra tomatillos, throw extra in there to kind of yeah. cut it back. So that's kind of, it's kind of like Elsa said, it's really, kind tomatoes to is you. clearly yeah. your base. And then from there, it's really kind of sky's the limit, how hot, spicy, or sweet. Or whatever kind of stuff that you like to do. Yeah. Um, there's all different types of things that you can put in salsa. If you want a sweet salsa, you could put pineapple in there. You could put mango. Um, if you want, you can put corn in salsa. Black um, beans. You could do beans. Um, for the spices, paprika, smoked paprika you mentioned, um, red pepper flakes. Yeah, sometimes if we don't have peppers and I want to make salsa, I'll throw in some chipotle powder because it's like a smoky flavor and it's fairly spicy, so it goes well. So then this last weekend, uh, we had this idea, and I can't remember who came up with it, probably me. I but think it was me. Was it you? Okay. I think so. <laughs> Yes, dear. We took two cast iron skillets full of tomatoes that we halved and we put the cut side up and we built kind of a really quick, uh, small charcoal fire. We got, got it set up for indirect heat using a couple of bricks for kind of like a heat wall and then we used hickory in this case. And we hit them with this like really pretty intense blast of hickory for about 20 or 30 minutes. We had no idea how this was going to go. We actually threw some peppers in the first time yeah, and some garlic. We put some peppers in, we put a few cloves of garlic in, and onion. we chopped an onion and, and put it in there. So and The end result of that was really surprising. When we pulsed it and we did our normal steps for salsa, you can kind of see in this one picture with the salsa on the left being our garden fresh, we'll call it, and the one on the right, it's a little more thick, it's a little more gelatinous, it's a mm -hmm. little more... Um, I don't even know what you call it, kind of like jelly-like. It's definitely th thicker. Yeah. So one fan, um, our buddy Patrick had asked how to thicken, and I was like, I don't know how to answer that, because we usually kind of keep it soupy, garden fresh, and mm -hmm. then I thought we could cook it. She was like, don't suggest to people that we cook it. That's, that's a... I mean, you can cook <laughs> salsa, but if you have fresh ingredients, I just think yeah. fresh flavor tastes better. If you want to can some or cook some and save it, 
to eat salsa in the winter time, if you have winter where you live, <laughs> um, then I think that's a good option. But in the summertime, you might as well eat it fresh because you have all the fresh ingredients available. My point being that smoking them might be that thing that helps you thicken them. Hopefully you like smoke because you're clearly going to get smoke too. But the hickory smoked uh, salsa seriously tastes like... It tastes like ribs. <laughs> it, tastes like, it tastes like barbecue. So I could see it being like a really awesome like glaze or mix or something to throw in some ground meats or on scrambled eggs. Or if you're a vegetarian and you just don't do smoked meats, it could be a very good barbecue-like treat for you. But we'll be doing that again. We're hitting the end of our season. Um, we did do a second batch because we were so impressed by the first batch of smoked tomatoes that we have in there that we'll either use for salsa or maybe tomato sauce. But again, it's to say that salsa, there's no rules. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just kind of your own preference and types of ingredients that you like. Just real quick, storage. It doesn't last long around our house. Yeah. Um, so we just put it in the refrigerator. We for fresh about... salsa, I think it lasts well in the fridge for about a week. Um, so, yeah. I mean, you could always, I would just eat it, just cook it. Just, you know, cook with it or eat it or yeah. take it to, you know, a summer backyard party or something. Don't try to freeze it because I don't, I don't know if it would hold up well or taste good. I think when I thought it would just be obliterated. It would be kind of soupy and just, yeah. I don't know. So I hope that was fun for the people who wanted to see it. I know it's going to be awesome to finally get that video like out of our computer and into the world and move on to the next thing. We'll put our uh, suggested kind of recipe um, for red salsa and green salsa. I guess I could even add the smoke even though it's really just the red salsa with smoked tomatoes. With smoked <laughs> tomatoes. Um, yeah, let us know how your salsas go uh, for the rest of this year or even over winter. And chop for chop. Brew for brew. Chip for chip. Chip for chip. <laughs> salsa for salsa. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, we're Chips. It's Salsa. Walton. That's really funny because when I was in high school, I had a friend and he used to call me Salsa because he was like, well, it's so close to your actual name and you love Salsa. <laughs> no. You got Elsie though, right? The Borden, wasn't it the Borden milk cow? The Borden milk cow. Elsie the cow. <sighs> Not a compliment. No, I like Salsa much better. <laughs> this guy doesn't like raw tomatoes, so gotta figure out a way to Get them to eat them. You could hide it in a rib. <laughs> in barbecue sauce. <laughs> How they do, boss. You did great. Yeah. Yeah, couple stuff. Date night. This counts, right?